So we all know Procreate is mainly a illustrating app. We've seen people animate in it, but can you edit photos in it? Let's find out. What is going on everybody? If you're new around here, my name is Finn Badgley. I am a commercial fashion and portrait photographer. And today I'm taking a look into photo editing with Procreate if it's something that is viable in a pinch, especially if you're on the go using an iPad like I sometimes do. This is something that I've been kind of wanting to tackle a little bit, especially as I've been getting more familiar adding the iPad into my workflow. So without further ado, let's jump in and see what we can do here. So right off the bat, I'm gonna select an image from one of my most recent Skillshare courses. The link to that will be in the description below if you wanna see some of the behind the scenes content from that guy. Okay, so we'll jump over into this image here. It's a very nice kind of simple commercial style shot. The colors are really nice. The light is really nice and natural. And we're gonna see what we can do in Procreate here. So. As I've been going along, I've realized it's a little different than how I would usually edit between Photoshop, Lightroom, Capture One, all that kind of stuff. So it's uh, we'll work out some things that are good about it, some things that maybe aren't so good, and then we'll see what we can do with it to see if you guys can incorporate it into your workflow and if it's worth it for you. So right off the bat, I'm gonna give this a bit of a color grade as I've realized that's kind of the Thing that you want to start with more or less. Um, sometimes I will usually do all my retouching and then the color grade over top of that, but for the purposes of this video and the way that I find is easiest to work within Procreate, I'm gonna actually do it a little backwards. So without further ado, we are going to slide over here, duplicate our main layer. And basically this is gonna involve a lot of duplicating layers. So just bear that in mind. Now we'll go over to our effects. And I always like giving a nice bit of curves here. So we're gonna do it to the layer and because we copied the layer, it's not actually gonna do anything to the main image layer here. And then we're gonna kind of play with it. So that way it is very non-destructive and you can kind of still try to edit things after the fact if you need to. So with that in mind, we're gonna give it a little bit of an S curve to start with, pull down the highlights a little bit and then bring up those mid-tone highlights, just like that. I'm not gonna do anything too crazy here. This is just something I like to do all my images to kind of even everything out a little bit. And maybe we'll bring up those mid-tones just a bit, just to give it a bit of an overall feel a little bit more. And right off the bat, that is looking pretty darn good. So we'll come out of that guy. And now that that is done, we are going to duplicate the layer again because that uh, we don't wanna keep modifying the same thing. So we're just gonna do this. This basically turns it into what would be an adjustment layer because you've just duplicated it and then you can mask it as you need to. And what do we wanna do here? Let's do some color balancing here. Keeping the shadows in mind. I'm gonna actually bring a little bit of cyan in there. And kind of even out the yellow to blue there. Mid-tones I do want a little warmer, so that's where we're gonna add in a bit more of that yellow. But not go overly crazy. And then the highlights, again, we'll add a bit more yellow. Maybe a little bit of red. Just to make that really nice and warm feel to everything. So we can Uncheck that and then let's just group these guys together. And we can see what that's done so far. Where it actually evens things out quite a bit and just gives it an overall color grade and makes it look pretty nice there. Now if we want to go for some more selective adjustments, we'll make a new layer. No, we won't, we won't make a new layer because come down here, duplicate that guy. And now we're gonna do a little bit of a curves layer. I like to do this with the majority of my images where I come through 
give it a bit of a dodging and burning kind of effect. So now, come back to the layer here, mask that guy, invert you, I'll come over here, get white selected, and now we just want to paint over the kind of highlight areas of the face and the body there just to refine things a little more and kind of make it more defined. I am on a soft airbrush with a low opacity. Size, what do we want it about? About there seems good. So we can just lightly paint in. Maybe we'll go a little lower there and a little higher on the opacity. What's this, what this will do is just make those features a little more defined. I can come in a little closer if we want. Decrease the brush size and just soften up those under eye areas a bit. Again, I don't want to do anything too drastic here. I'm just looking to do a general nice light edit to see if this is something that we can do. And so far, again, it has its quirks, but it's working fairly well for what I need it to. Open that guy up a little more. And again, I'm just kind of painting over those nice highlight areas. Any makeup professionals would call that the T-zone. Oh, we'll give a little bit to the eyes. Why the heck not? Nothing too drastic. Just something to add a little overall lift to everything. Right off the bat, I think that's looking pretty good. We'll come over here and see what we've done. You can see it just kind of refines things a little bit, makes it a little more enhanced. We'll come over here and add a little bit to the hair, just enhance that backlight that we have going on from this nice big window there. And overall, the light is actually really nice in this photo. If you wanna learn how to light something like this, again, uh, the link to that course where I break this down will be in the description down below. Maybe I want to add a little more light to that side of her face, just a little bit, nothing crazy. Okay, that's looking pretty good. But I think down here it's a little dark, so maybe I'll just come in and gently lift this area a bit, add some more detail in there, and get it closer to the exposure that we were seeing more so on the face here. I think that's looking pretty nice. So. Now, with that in mind, we'll duplicate that sucker again. And then we'll come over here, grab another curves layer, and this time we're gonna do the opposite. So now we'll darken that guy down. Come over there, mask it, invert it, and now we're gonna paint where we want to enhance those darker features. This is where we're talking about jaw lines, cheekbones, all that kind of stuff. When you put the two together, it just really helps refine the look of everything and make it really enhanced. And again, I'm using a very soft brush for this, so that way everything is very nice and subtle. Go a little bit to the nose there, maybe a little bit just on the upper eyelid a bit, kind of enhance the shape of that eyelid there. Under the lip a little bit, on top of the lip. Again, I'm not doing anything crazy here, although that looked a little crazy. So, just gonna, maybe I'll change my brush just to make it, I can find a little softer, or I won't. That's okay too, I'll just make it a little bit larger. I can soften the opacity off. Just, it's very subtle. I don't want to do anything that's going to look weird. I just want it to be very nice and soft. Which is why I'm doing it like this. And then you can paint in around that nose a little bit more. Maybe the other side of it too. Now we can come over here and see what that's doing. And 
if we don't like where it's filled in anywhere, we can take our eraser and just erase a bit of the area. Like there, we're kind of bled onto the face a little bit. Not a huge fan of that, so that's okay. Now, we are getting a little bit of weirdness here. This is something too that I find I'm figuring out as I've been going along with this workflow system is sometimes you'll get the little bit of a brush somewhere else that you just need to come back and kind of fix up after the fact. Um, now this, using the Apple Pencil for an edit like this, I don't find it too troubling. I'm used to using a pen tablet when I edit anyways, so it's nothing too unfamiliar for me. Now if we want to do something like skin retouching, come over here, I duplicate the group. There we go, and now I just want to flatten that sucker down. And basically what I'm going to do here is use that same very soft brush and just sample some of the color of the face and paint it in a little bit. It's not the most perfect way to do in the world, but it's the best way that I've found using this program. And I think if you're doing some quick edits on the go, it does the job. You can see I'm just sampling different colors. This is almost as if you were cloning, except it's a little, a little different. I've done something similar where you kind of paint in that when I've been editing in other programs. So this is nothing too foreign for me. And you can tell right off the bat, it is a little harsher than perhaps we want it to be. So after this, we will go into that layer and we'll drop the opacity of it just so that way it's not going to be anything too drastic and then our model will look fake and then that's not really what we want there and just i'm trying to keep a fairly natural retouch here i don't want to go too too crazy so again we'll just and to come down to all these areas, find a similar color. And all this is doing is just making it look a little bit more flattering, evening things out a little bit. Now, if we want to get some of that similar skin tone from the face down to the body, can select something like, we'll go about there and then with a soft brush, don't want anything too big, otherwise it'll bleed onto the clothes. We'll just come in and very subtly, just kind of paint over everything. Give a similar skin tone. Again, I'm not going to go crazy with this, and I will modify it after the fact as well. As you can see, it has, even though we tried to avoid it did bleed onto the clothes a little bit there. So we're just gonna take the eraser and just get rid of that sucker. Another way to do this is you can mask it and do the same. So it's a little more non-destructive, but for what we're doing here, I think this will do the trick nicely. And then again, on the other side here, so we don't want any of that skin color bleeding over onto the clothes and making things look weird at all. We'll drop the opacity of that. Crank that guy and just subtly fade it out a little bit. Maybe we'll blend it in a little bit so those shadows still kind of remain the same. We'll do that as well down here, just where it gets into that shadowy area. And then we'll come down here to the layer. I want to drop that to like 50% because that's otherwise it's going to be pretty dramatic that isn't really what i want so with that in mind now if we take that off you can see it's a fairly subtle skin retouch it's nothing crazy which is pretty much what i would do anyways it's not perfect but if you're on the go and you need a quick edit it does the trick so now looking at this we can see we started there and then by the end of our quick edit here in Procreate, that's what we're looking at there. So 
So I think for, honestly, a program on the go, something like this, it's actually not that bad. And I think you can get away with using Procreate for a lot of your edits. I know I'll probably be incorporating it into my workflow from time to time. Definitely not gonna rely on it, especially for a lot of my larger projects or any campaigns for anything, anything like that. But if I just want to edit a couple quick photos, especially if, say, I just shot with a model and I wanna send a quick photo off, if we did a test shoot or something, just so that way everybody has something to post on the gram, maybe I'll load in a quick photo to the iPad here, do a quick little edit in Procreate and then send it off. I can also couple this with Photoshop and Lightroom to create an entire editing workflow based right around the iPad here. So with all that said, I hope you enjoyed this video. Maybe if you've been thinking of editing on an iPad, especially if you have one already, then you can take advantage of some of the tools here in Procreate. Again, it's not perfect as it isn't really designed primarily as a photo editing app, but in a pinch, it definitely does the trick and it can do most of what I would need it to for a photo editing program. Anyways, it won't be my main workhorse by any means, but it will come in handy every now and again. And I think just doing that, it serves its purpose pretty darn well for me and maybe it can do the same for you. So with all that said, thank you so much for watching. I hope you gained some value out of this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please drop a like. It does actually make a difference. Leave a comment if you like this kind of thing and you wanna see more of it from me in the future. Subscribe if you have not already. Hit the bell to be notified when I post new videos so you never miss an upload. And as always, I will see you on the next one.